Verse 5. Another verse that we use. This is good and accept the sight of God our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. So we're here to magnify the truth of God's word. And magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're glad to have each of you with us. Let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll have Gerald come. And lead us in the song. Our Father, we thank you that today we can come together, fellowship one with another. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses us from all sin. We thank you, Father, that we have the privilege of serving you. We pray today that we might search our hearts and find out where we are in our relationship, our fellowship with you. We pray for the one doubt of their salvation or not sure, may this be the day they reaffirm their faith. May they call upon the Lord and let them know they're not trusting religion or water baptism or salvation, but they're trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, if there's someone here today that needs to make that decision, may they do it without delay. May they do it without a uh, father question, saying, I want to come and settle this thing today. I want to know that when I die, I'm going to heaven. When I go to heaven, I'll be with Jesus. I'll be with God. I'll be at a place where there's no sorrow, no pain, no suffering. Father, I don't want to go to hell. That's where the devil is going to wind up. A place of torment and a place of pain. Father, we pray for each of us. We have to look into our heart and find out when and where we got saved and what we're doing with our life today. May we honor you. May we love you. May we serve you. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Joe, come right off. morning. Let's take our hymnals and turn to page 191, please. 191. There's power in the blood. Let's stand on this song, please. <laughs> life. 
today. We thank God for your presence. Thank God for your prayers and your giving your time, your talents, and treasure back to God. We thank God for the privilege of being a part of the team effort. We thank God for each of you, and our visitors, I guess, and friends, and those who have come in. We're thankful for those that God has touched and healed, have different ones that have been out for a little while, but God has raised you up. And we thank God for you being with us today. We're here to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. And over in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, if you'll turn there in your Bibles with me, we'll do some reading here. And we'll be looking at a question. How can the believer be certain that he is growing spiritually? Peter gave three evidences of true spiritual growth. Number one, fruitfulness. Number two, vision. And number three, security, assurance. So we'll look at these verses as we read here today in 2 Peter chapter 1. Begin with, uh, I think what we'll do is just read down to, let's read the whole chapter. Silent Peter, a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power, his divine power, according as his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us glory and virtue. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. By these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. Verse 7, and to godliness brotherly, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. Christians do fall. Christians do fail. Christians need the grace of God and the strength of God, the mercy of God every day in our lives. Verse 11, for so is an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you by remembrance. Stir you up by way of remembrance. Somebody says, I don't like to be stirred up. I like to kind of just sort of go along. No, God says you need to be stirred up by way of remembrance. Knowing that surely I must put off my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my departure or decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not a lot of cunning devised fables. We made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the right witness of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice from 
excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto we do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in darkness, a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, <coughs> but holy men of God, holy women of God, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This is a precious book, divinely given to us to guide us and direct us. Without the scriptures, there'll be no growth. There'll most be no souls saved. We need the word of God. And God has given us this word to encourage us and strengthen us and help us to mature and be busy trying to win people to Jesus Christ our Lord. As we look at this today, I'm going to ask you a question. If someone came to you today and said, could you give me the day and place when you got saved? Could you do that? Do you know when you became a child of God? You know when you said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm doomed. I'm damned. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be saved. You know where you did that when it was? I remember as we give you an illustration. My brother, my brother and best friend, I was in church with them, and the invitation was given, and they got up and came forward. I came forward with them, and I signed a card, and later on we were baptized. I became, I became a good Baptist. I'll tell, I tell people I was a wet Baptist going straight to hell because I wasn't sure that I was really saved. Was I just following my friends because they were doing this? Why did I really come forward? Did I really do what I needed to do? Did I really ask Christ to be my Savior? So we need to examine our heart and say, do I know that I know I'm a child of God? How do you become a child of God? The Bible says if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you become a child of God. God becomes your father. You become his child. We thank God for that honor and that privilege of knowing that I've been born again by the Spirit of God. Today, are you serving Jesus like you could or should? Only you can answer that. If you're saved, you need to belong to a good local Bible-believing church. This is God's desire and design for every child of God. We know that we all belong to the church, the body of Christ, if we're saved. We've all been placed in the body of Christ by our faith in Jesus. But you need to find a good local church where you can get in there and begin to serve and give your time, your talents and treasure back to God. As we say from time to time, we're nothing but custodians. We're caretakers of what God has put within our care. God has given to us many, many opportunities. God has given to us this great work of redemption and salvation whom I share with our family, our employer, employee relationship, people that we meet. We need to get the word of God out to them that they too might become a child of God. So as we look at this today, we want to examine ourselves, search our heart, and say where we are in serving the Lord Jesus. Do you belong to a good Bible-believing church? A good local church? Have you followed your Savior in believer's baptism? When I talk about baptism, not this dipping the water on your head as a baby. That's not Bible baptism. That is not even scriptural. Bible baptism is when you go down into the water like Jesus. He went down into the water, the water covered. He came up out of the water. And that is an illustration. When you go into the water, picture of death. When you come up out of the water, picture of resurrection, newness of life.
So you need to search your heart today and say, am I, am I really where the Lord wants me to be? Someone came to you and they said, what church do you belong to? Where's your membership? Are you giving your time, your talent, your treasure back to God? That would be a good question. And only you can answer that. So today we're so glad that we can come and look at these things here that God has given to us. And as again we raise the question. The question is this. How can the believer be certain that he's growing spiritually? Peter gave three evidences. True spiritual growth, there must be fruitfulness. Are we bearing fruit? What kind of fruit are we bearing? Every day, we're to be fruit bearers. Number two, vision. How's your eyesight? I know I've got limitations of mine, but how's your, how's your vision? Has it been darkened, dampened? Has it been some sidetracked? Has your vision? What do you see? Who do you see? What is my purpose? What has God called me to do? I did not believe I would reach any 86 years old. I never thought that. I thought I would die young. But God has allowed me to live that long. Almost 87 years old. That's almost 90. 90. Where am I in the service of the Savior? Am I where God wants me to be? Am I giving myself to the Lord on a daily basis? Only you can answer that. So today you want to search your heart and find out where are you in your relationship with Christ? Are you growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? Are you just sitting on the sidelines and says, let someone else do it? No, we need to raise up our Sleep and say, Lord, what can I do while I'm still alive? While I still have strength able to do? What am, I, what am I doing for Jesus? How am I serving Him? Am I where God wants me to be? You need to examine your heart and ask yourself that question. The Lord Jesus Christ has called us to be witnesses and testimonies for Jesus. As I followed my brother and best friend up that day and joined the church, as I tell people when you're at home and you're laying in the bed, you begin to search your heart, and there's doubts that begin to arise. I'm not really sure I'm saved. I'm not really sure I made the right decision. I did that because my brother and best friend went down. I followed them. No, you need to say, do I know that or no? With a shadow of the doubt that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I can tell you the place where I was, and when I did this, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I'm not trusting water baptism. I'm not trusting religion. I'm not trusting the Pope or some preacher. I'm trusting Jesus and Him alone. He's the one who took our sins upon Himself, went to Calvary, and by the grace of God, He tasted death for every man woman, boy, and girl. Thank God for the great salvation that we have. We thank God for the privilege and honor of being to love Him and serve Him down here in the nasty now where we live. Are you a member of a good church? Are you giving your time, talent, and treasure back to God? Are you serving, giving back to Him? When's the last time you wrote a check in the service of the Lord? Do you remember that? How much was it? You say, well, I don't have much to live on. But you know, everything we have, God gives to us. And God wants us to be faithful in giving back to Him. Our time, our treasure, our talents, our spiritual gifts. We have so much to be thankful for. We have so much to give back to God. What little time we have down here. We're going to ask you to search your heart to say, I know that I'm saved. I know I'm where God wants me to be. If not, you can alter and change that. Today, make that decision. What are you going to do with your time, 
your talent, your treasure. I'm in the local church where God wants me to be right now. I want to serve him. I want to be faithful. I want to honor him and love him. I want to be what God wants me to be. Again, we're so glad that you're here today. We thank God for your coming. And we go and ask if we can help you in any way. We've got some good preachers here today be able to sit down and talk with you and pray with you if you need that. Be glad to help you any way we possibly can. But we're glad that you're here. We're going to bow our heads and close this service like we normally do in the service. And uh, as we said before, if you're doubting your salvation, you're not quite sure, settle it today. Don't linger. Don't hesitate. There may not be a tomorrow. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today is to make that decision. I know that I've been saved. I know that Christ is my Savior. I'm trying to do what I can for what time I have. Our Father, we pray in Jesus' name that those that are doubting their salvation, may they come to them and make this decision. Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you. You're the one that died and was buried and rose again. You're the one that took my sin upon yourself and paid my sin debt in full. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Now help me to honor you and love you and serve you with what I have. Father, give me grace. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me what I need. Have my eyes open. Help me not to be rebellious and disobedient. Help me, Lord, to love you and to serve you with all that I've got. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.